Amen. Amen. Please let's open our Bibles to the book of 1 John chapter 5. 1 John chapter 5. 1 John chapter 5. I read verse 13. 1 John chapter 5 verse 13. It says, I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God that you may know that you have eternal life. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Apostle John speaking to believers, he said the purpose of writing his epistle was to assure uh, the brethren that those who believe in the name of the Lord Jesus that they have eternal life as a present reality. Not something that will happen, but they have it now. Amen. Amen. So eternal life belongs to us. True faith in the name of Jesus. And we say the name of Jesus is more than the combination of consonants and vowels. It's not about calling him Yeshua, Amashiach. Or calling him uh, Joshua, or calling him Jesus or Jesus, as the Greek will say. It's not about the sound we make, it's about understanding his identity, his personality. <laughs> What has he done? What distinguishes him from all others? Hallelujah. Because we know there are people bearing the name Jesus even nowadays. There are people, and Jesus is just the English of the Greek Jesus, and which the Hebrew, the Hebrew is Yeshua. Eh? Or Joshua. You get it now. So there are people bearing Joshua. So it's not the name, the sound of the name. It's about what comes to your mind when you call that name. What do you what do you know about that person? When you say see Ronaldo, there are many Ronaldos in the world. Hallelujah. But one thing differentiates this C Ronaldo from the others. Is that not so? So when you say see Ronaldo, you are seeing five Ballon d'Ors. Is that not so? Uh, you are seeing football. How the fans of uh, Lionel Messi will not be angry that I did not choose their star. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So when you say Jesus, what comes to your mind? <laughs> the Bible tells us one thing about Jesus, what distinguishes him from all others. 
He is the one who died for our sins, was buried, was raised on the third day by God the Father, and is now seated at the right hand of the Father, far above all principalities and powers, with angels and all rulers and authorities made subject to him. That is the Jesus we are talking about. The one whose blood was shed for our sins. The one who yielded his life, gave his life for our sins. The one who was buried and was raised from the dead on the third day. That is the Jesus we are talking about. When your faith is in his name, that is in his death for your sins, and in his resurrection, when your faith is in these facts about him, you are not looking at your sin anymore. You are not trying to uh, deliver yourself or to gain forgiveness by confession and repentance, continual daily repentance and confession of sin. But you are looking at him as the one who died once and for all and paid for your sin forever. When you look at him and your faith is in him, that is what it means to call on his name. Amen. So the name of Jesus is about his death for our sins, his burial, and his resurrection on the third day. Faith in this is what brings forgiveness to us. It is by this we receive forgiveness of sin. No, we are not begging God to forgive us our sins. It is ignorance when you start begging God, pleading with God to forgive your sin. It's ignorance. You don't need it. It is religion that teaches people to beg God to forgive their sins. Some even fast and pray three days, seven days, begging God, crying, weeping. God, forgive me. I beg you, just forgive me. It's ignorance of the gospel. The Bible says to him, all the prophets bear witness, give witness that everyone who believes in his name, everyone who believes in his name receives, receives forgiveness of sins. Hallelujah. Amen. We, it, 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 see, there's nowhere where the Bible says God will give you forgiveness or God will forgive you. Not in the New Testament. God will forgive you or God will give you forgiveness. There's no place. Every, everywhere he talks about forgiveness from the Lord, he says to receive, receive. Not God will give. It's man that should receive. Amen. Amen. For example, look at Acts of the Apostles, chapter 26, verse 18. <laughs> Acts of the Apostles, chapter 26, verse 18. This is, the, this is Jesus Christ, our Lord, speaking to Paul, the apostle, when he was commissioning him to the mission of preaching the gospel. Look at what he told him. He said, I'm sending you to open their eyes so that they may turn from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God, that God may forgive 
their sins. Is that what is there? Acts of the Apostles, chapter 26. Please help your neighbor. This verse 18. Amen. Look at what it says. Just to open their eyes so that they may turn from, the, from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God that God may forgive their sins. Is that what is written there? What is written there? That they, 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 not God. God has no business with forgiveness of sin. It is they now. God is waiting for man to respond that they may receive that they may receive forgiveness of sins. So it is man that needs to receive forgiveness of sins. God has forgiven because Christ paid the price. So it is man that is the ball is in the court of man to receive. Pro forgiveness of sin is proclaimed or preached. It means it's announced. Forgiveness of sin. That is the, the fact that sins have been forgiven by God. All sins have been forgiven. It's to be pronounced, announced, proclaimed. We announce it. Hey, Charlie, your sins are forgiven. Oh, Charlie, your sins are forgiven. That's what we preach. We tell them. All they need to do now is receive their receipt. They receive that their sins have been paid. You receive their receipt by faith. When you believe in Christ, you receive it. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Acts chapter 10, verse 43. I'm just reminding us. Say, to him, all the prophets bear witness. Acts chapter 10. The same book of Acts, chapter 10. Peter the apostle is speaking here now. Peter speaking here says, To him, that is to Jesus. All the prophets of the Old Testament uh, bear witness that everyone who believes in him receives, receives. Not God will forgive them. No, they are now, forgiveness is ready. It's been, it's like food made ready. Your own is to come and receive and eat. They receive forgiveness of sins through his name. Amen. It's as simple as that. Amen. Glory to God. So God is not waiting for man to confess his sins. Confess every day, every day. And beg God to forgive you. Oh God, forgive me. Please forgive me. No. No. He calls everyone to receive forgiveness. Amen. I have forgiveness of sins. Hallelujah. So we have eternal life too. We have sanctification. We have justification. No condemnation. These are things we have thought about in the first uh, the first part of this teaching. Okay, so today let's look at the book of Gospel according to John chapter 1 verse 12. John chapter 1 verse 12. And let's see what we can do quickly. The book of John, Gospel according to John. Chapter 1 verse 12. Gospel according to John, chapter 1, verse 12. The Bible says, But to all who did receive him, who believe in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Amen. 
Amen. He says, but to all, everyone who receive Jesus, who believe in his name. So he's just explaining what he meant by to receive Jesus. What does he mean to receive Jesus? Does he mean to receive a crucifix that they have Jesus, uh, you know, emboldened on it? Or to receive a sticker? Or to take a handkerchief? Or to take... No. What does he mean to receive Jesus? Is it to receive a church membership? What does he mean to receive Jesus? Is it to receive baptism or communion? What does he mean to receive? Is it about something you take physically? No. He said what it means is to believe in his name. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 To receive Jesus is to believe in his name. Hello? And what does it mean to believe in his name? It means to trust, to believe, to rely on his death for your sins as the only solution to your sin. His burial and his resurrection on the third day. It's not that you are trying to it's not about trying to impress God with your religious performance. You want you want to impress him with your tithe and offering and seed and sowing and reaping and all those things. Well, it's not about your work and service in the house of God. Those things are good in their places, but that's not what brings you into the family of God. What brings you into God's family is faith in the name of Jesus. That is, faith in his death for your sins, his burial and his resurrection on the third day. Amen. Amen. So how does a person become a child of God? Some people's definition of child of God is religious. He, they will say, a child of God, eh, it's well, me, I'm trying, oh, I'm, not, I'm not saying I'm a child of God, oh, but I'm trying. You know, I'm trying. <laughs> so, who is a child of God? Oh, what comes to their mind is somebody like pastor, who reads his Bible, who lives a holy life, who doesn't commit fornication, who doesn't drink, he reads his Bible every day, he can preach very well, he can pray, you know, is a holy person. Yes. He goes to church regularly. That is a, a child of God. But that's not a child of God. You might do all that and yet you are not a child of God. Because if, that's, if, if a child of God is somebody who does all those things, because he does those things, that's what makes him a child of God, then definitely... The Chinese monkey in the Chinese zoos, you know, they are they must be human beings because they wear trousers and they wear suits and they go to market to buy goods for their masters. They must be human beings, is that not so? Because they wear clothes. 
Kasebio, Yoka, like Chinese stopper, and now that opera. Utuna will now find who Yasime, our friend of the Papeto, or one and more of a minute, or your own merit. Amen. Those things don't make us human beings. We are born as human beings. Yeah. Oh, Jimmy, I bet a man. Amen. It's not what we do that makes us human beings. We were born with the nature of human beings. Hallelujah. So a child of God is that person who has believed in the name of Jesus Christ. That is a child of God. The person who has believed is about faith in Jesus and you are not trying to become a child of God you are not trying you don't try you are either a child of God you are not a child of God and being a child of God is not something you do you do gradually 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 you don't become a child of God gradually no no as you are born at an instant on a definite hour, definite minute, definite day, definite month, definite year, in the same way you are born a child of God. On a definite time, a definite day, definite week, a definite month, a definite year, you know that you are born again. Amen. You have a reverence. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. That very instant, you put your faith in his death for your sin that he died for, not just religiously, not historically, not as a moral, uh, you know, what do you call it in school? Uh, uh, moral instruction, what do you call it? Uh -huh. It's not yeah, religious and moral uh, instruction, uh, education. No, he, this is the truth of God's word that that man, Jesus, came, died for my sins. Now I cannot help myself. My confessions cannot help me. My repentance every year, every month cannot help me. Now, there's nothing. My fasting cannot help me. Promising God I will not do it again every day cannot help me. Now I put my whole faith in his death. The moment you do that, and you say, Lord, I believe with all my heart that you died for my sins. I can't help myself. You are not even confessing, but you are admitting that you are a sinner and that he died for your sins. That moment, that very instant, you say, Jesus, I receive forgiveness. I receive it, Lord. Thank you. I receive eternal life. That moment, that moment you say that from your heart to the Lord, like the thief on the cross, you are born again. Amen. You are a child of God. Amen. Perfectly, 100% a child of God. Amen. That's what you are. Amen. The book of First John, chapter five. First John, epistle according to John, chapter five. You know, we, we read from it at the beginning. So, First John, chapter five. First John, chapter five. First John, chapter five. First John, chapter five. Look at it. Verse 1. We are reading the first part of verse 1. Are you there? Have you seen it? Please, come. Give it to my guest. Is yours? Ah, so who is borrowing? You should cover your face. Amen. Hallelujah. 
please, if one of them is boring, just give them. Somebody, I don't want that distraction. I don't want it. I want full attention. Amen. Amen. So 1 John chapter 5, verse 1. 1 John chapter 5, verse 1. What does it say? It says, everyone who believes, everyone who, everyone who, everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is, has been born of God. Hello? So who is a child of God? The person who has believed that Jesus is the Christ. That is that Jesus is the son of God. And of course you know that he was confirmed as son of God by his resurrection from the dead. So the moment a person believes in the man, Christ Jesus, the son of God, you will say, Lord, I believe with all my heart that you died for my sins and rose again. I believe that your death on the cross was for my sin. I believe that you rose again for my justification. That moment you look up to him, that moment your faith looks up to him, that very moment you are born again. You become a child of God. <laughs> It's not about how well you perform in the church. It's not about joining the choir, joining uh, uh, sanctuary cleaners and ushers. No. It's about a wholehearted faith in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So who is a child of God? Who is a child of God? The person who goes to church regularly? No. The person who reads Bible every day? No. The person who plays Christian music in his room every Sunday morning? Hey, he will play Sonny Bedu, play everything. You know, he's always playing good music. Every Sunday he's playing. He has a, he has Christian stickers all over his room, all over his vehicle. He has a very big Bible. He's participating in the ongoing length. Length. Hmm? Is that a child of God? He doesn't smoke. He doesn't drink. He doesn't commit fornication. His behavior, his behavior is very clean. Very honest. Very respectful. Very cool and calm. Is that a child of God? Hello? Is that a child of God? What makes us a child of God? What is it? What is it? Faith in the name of Jesus. And what is the name of Jesus? J E S U S. What is the name of Jesus? Eh? What is the name of Jesus? What is his name? What is his name? Is he died and he rose again. He died for our sins and he rose again on the third day. That's his name. The resurrection and the life. Glory to God. Our savior from sin. That's his name. Amen. The lamb of God that took away the sin of the world. That's his name. Hallelujah. So if you are not a child of God, you can become a child of God right here, right now. Simply believe in your heart. Believe in your heart. That's it. It's not until you stop committing sin, 100%. No. The very moment you repent, Believing in his name, that very moment, that very instant, you are born again. You are a child of God. Amen. 
Okay. Hallelujah. So, in his name, we have forgiveness of sins. In his name, we have justification from sins. We have no condemnation. We have sanctification. Is that not so? In his name, we have eternal life. And in his name, we are children of God. We have what we call sonship. We are sonship. So we are God's children. We are sons of God. We are children of God. That's what we are. We are not open. We are not trying to be children of God. We are. Hallelujah. We are. Glory to God. Now let's go to the book of John. John has so much to tell us. This, this John is a wonderful man. John chapter 14. We want to look at another one. John chapter 14. John 14. Let's look at verse 26. Gospel according to John. Gospel according to John chapter 14 verse 26. John chapter 14 verse 26. Jesus here, our Lord himself speaking, before he went to the cross, he says, but the, but the helper, the King James Version says, the comforter is the same thing. Amen. But the helper or the comforter, the Holy Spirit, that is the Holy Spirit is the comforter or the helper that we are talking about. He says, whom the Father will send in my name you see so in whose name does the father send the holy spirit to us in whose name the name of our pastor the name of our church hello in whose name the name of jesus is it in the name of the father the son and the holy ghost no in the name of jesus so who are those who receive the Holy Spirit? Hello? Who are those who receive the Spirit? How can we receive the Spirit? The Holy Spirit. Is it by trying not to commit sin, live a holy life, Lady, make sure you don't wear trousers, you don't shampoo your ear, you don't use your ring, then the Holy Spirit will come. Just make sure you live a holy life and learn to worship God and to pray every morning. Learn to sing very slow songs, raise your hand and say, Oh, 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 oh. and learn to cry. No. Is that how we receive the Holy Spirit? No. No. How? What, what must we do to receive the Spirit? Amen. John chapter 7. That same book of John chapter 7. John chapter 7. John 7. I read verse 30. 7 to 39 verses 37 through to 39 the book of gospel according to John chapter 7 from verse 37 through to verse 39 it says on the last day of the feast the great day Jesus stood up and cried out if anyone thirsts let him come to me and drink whoever believes in me take note of that whoever believes in me as the scripture has said out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. Now, take note of verse 39. Hello? He now says, Now, this is said about the Spirit, whom those who believed, those who believed in him, not those who go to church, not those who don't sin, no, those who believed in him were to receive for at that moment he was speaking, for as yet the spirit had not been given. Why? Because Jesus was not yet glorified. But as of today, hello, has he been glorified? What is his glorification? His death for our sins, his resurrection on the third day, and sitting at the right hand of the Father. So he has been glorified. 
So everyone who believes in him now receives what? The Holy Spirit. Is that not what we need to do? So if you are believing in the name of Jesus, do you have the Holy Spirit? Yes. Or you want to beg God to give you? You are still fasting, begging, pleading. Hello? Or you are still tarrying to receive the Spirit? Hello? What do we have in the name of Jesus? What do we have in the name of Jesus? What do we have in the, in the name of Jesus? The Holy Spirit. We have the Holy Spirit. The moment we believed, as the scripture says, the moment we believe in him, that is to believe in his name, ah, we receive the Spirit. Now, go to the book of Ephesians. Chapter 1. Ephesians is after the book of Galatians. Ephesians chapter 1. It's on page 1121. Page 1121. Chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13. On page 1121. I know most of us are using my type of Bible. so And that's why I choose this type of Bible. So that I can, as a teacher, I can guide you there. Amen. Are you there? Amen. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13. Are you there? On page 1121. Are you there? Have you seen it? Okay, it says, In him, that is in Jesus, you also, when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and believed in him, you believed in him, were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit. Did you see that? Hello, did you see that in your Bible? On page 1121. Please help your neighbor. He's a church. There's no embarrassment there, please. Amen. See? I want you to know, the scripture is very clear that the moment a person hears the gospel, what is the gospel of salvation? What is the gospel of salvation? It's not God will bless you. God will turn your life around. Uh, God, 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 will, God will take you from zero to hero. No, not that one. God will solve all your problems. Ah, God will turn you from uh, uh, poor to uh, from uh, grass to grace. He will change your life. He will destroy your enemies. That's not the gospel of salvation. How to make your first million. That's not the gospel of salvation. How to succeed in your business. Business strategy. One oh one way to know your husband. That's not the gospel of salvation. The gospel of salvation is about Jesus. Is death for our sins. Is resurrection for our justification. That is the gospel. The moment you hear that gospel, that Christ died for your sins, and he was raised again on the third day, the Bible says from that moment, that instant, you are sealed with the Spirit of God. That means... God gives you his spirit. It's not by crying. It's not by pleading. It's not by begging. It's not by fasting. No, it's by faith. So the believer in the name of Jesus has the Holy Spirit dwelling in him. We have the indwelling of the Spirit in the name of Jesus. I have the indwelling Holy Spirit, that is the Holy Spirit dwelling in me, because I believe in the name of Jesus. It's not because I pray more than you. It's not because I know Bible more than you. It's not because I live a holier life than you. 
No, it's simply because I did the same thing that the Bible says we should do to believe in the name of Jesus. That is, to believe in his death for my sins and his resurrection on the third day. Ever. Amen. Amen. So let me ask again what do we have in the name of Jesus? The indwelling of the Spirit. So today we have seen, and additionally, uh, that is in addition to what we learned in last week, that we have what? We have sonship. We are now children of God. And then we also have the indwelling of the Spirit. The Holy Spirit now lives in us. Hallelujah. Amen. The Holy Spirit is not for special people. It's not for the very, 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 very serious Christians. Those who, are who, those who are who do every week, they fast three days every week. They don't even touch, they don't allow a guy to touch them or they don't even touch. They are very sanctimonial, very holy. They are very committed in church. No, the Holy Spirit is not for them. The Holy Spirit is for those who believe. In the name of Jesus. The moment a person wholeheartedly believes in Jesus, not just as one who can solve my problem, one who can conquer which for me, who can heal me, who deliver me from witch and wizard. No, I mean the one who delivers you from sin. The moment you believe that he died for your sins, that moment, that very moment, the Holy Spirit is given to you. Hallelujah. I have the Holy Spirit living in me because I have believed in the name of Jesus. I am a child of God because I have believed in the name of Jesus. So I am blessed. Amen. One more before we go. The book of John. That same book of John. John. That same book of gospel according to John. John chapter uh, 14. John 14. Let's look at what he says in verse 13 and 14. John chapter 14, verse 14 and 15. I'm sorry, verse 13 and 14 rather. Verses 13 and 14. Jesus is the one speaking here. He said, whatever you ask in my name, this I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Verse 14, if you ask me anything in my name, I will do it. Now let's go to First John. First John. First John chapter three. First John chapter three. First John chapter three. I read from verse twenty-two to twenty-three. First John chapter three. First John chapter three, verse twenty-two to twenty-three. It says, and whatever we ask, we receive from him. Whatever we ask, we receive from him. Because we keep his commandments and do what pleases him. Okay, can you read that quickly? Amen. So, he said we have this confidence in him that if we ask anything, amen, 
Whatever we ask, we receive from him. Is that not so? So what gives us that guarantee? He said because we keep his commandments. Amen. Is that not wonderful? We keep his commandments. Hallelujah. You know when some people hear his commandments, what comes to their mind quickly are the laws of Moses. Thou shalt not do this. Thou shalt not do that. Thou shalt not. Do that. Don't do this. Don't do that. So they are trying. So they want God to answer their prayer. So they have to. They, they, they will dedicate three days. They want to do three days prayer. So they will. They will make sure that they try not to offend anybody. If anybody try to offend them, they will say, I forgive you. So that they, God can answer their prayer. They want to live a very holy life. Amen. But what is the commandment that we keep that makes God to hear our prayer that we receive from? Look at it. Verse 23. The immediate verse. He says, and this is his commandment. This is the commandment that we keep. And what is that commandment? That we believe, we believe in the name of his son Jesus Christ and love one another just as he has commanded us. Amen. That's his commandment. So, when we believe in the name of Jesus, hello. And what is the name of Jesus? Yeshua Mashiach? No. What's the name of Jesus? Oh, come on. What's the name of Jesus? Is there for our sins? His resurrection on the third day. So, so when we believe in his death for our sins and his resurrection on the third day, the Bible says, whatever we ask, we receive. Glory to God. This is what gives us confidence. So, in the name of Jesus, we have answer to prayer guaranteed. Answer to prayer guaranteed. Amen. Amen. Answer to prayer guaranteed. Which means we have assurance of answer to our prayers. It's not because it's not because I, I live earlier than you. It's not because I, I know Bible more than you. No. I receive answer to my prayer because I believe in the name of Jesus. I'm not coming to God in my own name. I don't come to God based on my own performance and say, God, you know I'm paying my title. God, you know I'm like a Pharisee. Lord, you know I fast twice a week. Oh. God, you know now, you have to answer my prayer because you don't. You know me now. You mean you know me? Twice a week I fast. I pay tight of everything. I don't commit fornication. I don't smoke. I don't do. I don't like all the other people. You know? Lord, you know me now. You know me. So you have to answer my prayer. No? That's Phariseeism. But faith in the name of Jesus. That is what guarantees answer to prayer. We receive whatever we ask because we keep his commandments. And this is his commandment that we believe in the name of his son Jesus Christ. Hello? Though no, many of us, we still need to learn how to receive properly. Some of us don't know how to receive so we ask, but we don't. We have not learned to receive. We are still. We are expecting God to give us answer to our prayer, but it's about receiving, and that's why we come to church so that we can learn more and so that we can enjoy God more. Amen. Hallelujah. Miracles don't happen because we are holier than you. 
No, it happens because of the name of Jesus. They asked Peter and John, How did you do this? How were you able to raise this crippled man? Peter and John said, Oh, why are you people looking at us? As if it was by our own piety or power or godliness or holiness that we have made this man to walk. No, it's not our own power or our own holiness or godliness or piety, our devotion. No. He said God has simply honored the name of his son Jesus Christ. So it's about the name of Jesus. No, Peter and John. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So we have that answer to prayer guaranteed in his name. Whether it's a prayer of authority, that is authoritative prayer, eh? or is a supplicating prayer, we have answer to prayer guaranteed all because of the, our faith in the name of Jesus alone. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So what do we have in the name of Jesus? We have sonship. Is that not so? We are God's children. I'm talking about what we have learned today, fresh. Amen. So we have what? Sonship. Then we have what? We have what? We have the Holy Spirit. And then we have what again? Answer to prayer guaranteed. All because of our faith in the name of Jesus. Is that not a wonderful thing? Okay, let's take the last one for today and we go home. We'll go and meditate on it. Go and chew it. Go and digest it. Hallelujah. Are you not blessed? Yes. Oh, glory to God. The one more. Oh, hallelujah. And I think that's the last one. Anyway, the book of Mark, chapter 16. There are, there are plenty, but I, I just tried to take us on these ones. Mark, chapter 16. Mark, gospel according to Mark. After the book of Matthew. Matthew is the first book in the New Testament. So after Matthew, you see Mark. Mark chapter 16. Mark chapter 16. It's on page 969. Page 969. Okay, are you there? Mark chapter 16. I'm reading from verse 7 from verse 15. And he said to them, Go into all the world and proclaim the gospel to the whole creation. Whoever believes, that is, whoever believes the gospel is, and is baptized will be saved. But whoever does not believe, that is, does not believe the, the gospel, will be condemned. Verse 17, and these signs will accompany, will follow those who believe, that is, in the gospel, the name. In my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak a new tongue. Okay, let me stop there for now. Let's just stop. Um, uh, Tom, <laughs> Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So in the name of Jesus, we have what I call indisputable authority over all the works of the devil. Indisputable authority. Indisputable. 
one that cannot be argued, that cannot be disputed, indisputable authority over all the works of the devil. Hallelujah. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Look at the book of Luke. Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10, verse 19. Luke chapter 10. Or let's read verse 17 first. Verse 17 says, The 72 returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons, demons are subject to us in your name. Do you see that? So, in the name of Jesus, we have indisputable dominion, authority over all the works of Satan, witchcraft, sorcery, sicknesses, diseases. We all the works of the devil. We have indisputable authority over them. When we say in the name of Jesus, out, they go out. Hello. Don't let that devil deceive you by stumbling, shouting. Don't let the, don't be confused by that. He's out. He's out. He cannot resist the name of Jesus. So we have authority in his name. Amen. We have what? Authority. Jesus said, when he, wrote, when he died and rose again, he said, all authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Are we not blessed? Hello, are we there? Are you with me? Hello? Are you blessed? Can't you, can't you see how fortunate you are? See, stop looking down on yourself because you don't have a million dollar in your account. Or because you don't have a private jet yet. Or you don't have a car yet. Yeah. You don't you don't you don't have 2021 or 2022 edition. Hmm? Maybe you don't even have a TV at home. Maybe you don't even have a shoe. Listen, what you are is much more than that. Something more than gold. Something more than gold. The spirit of God in the heart of man. Is something more than gold. Amen. Amen. What you have is more than gold. You have, you have all of this. Forgiveness of sins. Justification. Sanctification. No condemnation. You have eternal life. You are a child of God. Eh? You have the Holy Spirit living in you. Amen. You have answer to prayer guaranteed. And you have that indisputable authority in the name of Jesus. All this not because of anything you have done or you have done better than anybody, but simply because you believe. You are blessed. Let's be on our feet. Hallelujah. Oh, come and give a shout of praise to God. Give a shout of praise to our God. Do you really value what you have? You know, some people, are, are, you know, why many of our youths, many of our youths, I'm not talking about our youths here anyway. I and mean, then many youths, you know, they, they are excited when they go to churches where they are telling them about, hey, you see, I went to America three days ago. I just returned from uh, Japan. Yeah? And the man of God has a, 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 a you know, a, a Rolls Royce bag. And, and everywhere is shining. Everywhere is shining. Everywhere is shining. Then they say, hmm. Hmm. And then the man of God is distributing money. They are excited. And the man of God says, I'm going to bless you. Somebody's going to be blessed here today. Come and sow a seed. And your life will be changed. And they'll be excited. You see them jumping. They want to go to the front and meet the man of God. That is deception. There's nothing in those oh, things. Hallelujah. Nothing. Nothing. I'm telling you, nothing. Hallelujah. Nothing in those things. <laughs> Mopo, one 
ici, elles sont pour vous, les décisions que vous m'avez donc pris, à moins de ce qui est chaos, mais si tu as pris les femmes, 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 What you have is more than gold. It should fill you with joy. There should be joy bubbling in you. Hallelujah. This is joy. I say this is joy. The assurance of forgiveness of sins. This is joy. We are not afraid of death. We are not afraid of rapture. We are not afraid of rapture. We are not afraid of missing the rapture. Hey, glory to God. We have life in us. We have eternal life. Oh, what a blessed life. They're all in the name of Jesus. We not because we pay money. Hey, what a blessed life. What a blessed life. What a blessed life. I want you to worship him. Worship him. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Worship him. Worship him. Worship him. Worship him. Worship him. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God. What a mighty God we serve. Hallelujah. The hands of our Lord. Heaven and earth adore Him. What a mighty Lord. Amen. I want you to give thanks to God for all that you have in Christ. For all these things that we have in Christ. For all these things that we have in Christ. For all that we have in Christ. For all that we have in Christ. Give him thanks. Give him praise. Give him thanks. Give him praise. Oh, give him thanks. Give him praise. For all that we have in Christ. We have all these things. We are blessed. He has blessed us. He has blessed us with every spiritual blessing. Akaboro sute kelelo, lema na kabaradasi, ebredo kusute grahata, ebaraka teliamo, yele gosto tu brada bolo honde ki ati yalaba. Hey, thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. 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 Thank you by the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, we pray. Et tu as gagné, oh ma ouïe, lolo, et l'oïe, et gouli kounami, et tu as gagné, et te paie, ma ouïe, lolo, et l'oïe, Jesus, Jesus. Amen. 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 I want you to say it with me. I believe in the name of Jesus. And therefore, I'm a child of God. I have the Holy Spirit living in me permanently. I have authority, indisputable authority over all the works of Satan. I have forgiveness of sins, past, present, future. There's no condemnation for me. I am justified. I am sanctified. 
I am holy. I am righteous. Not because of anything I have done well or better than my neighbor. Not because of anything I have given to God. Whether money or service. But simply and only because I have believed in the name of Jesus Christ. I have believed in his death for my sins, his burial, and his resurrection on the third day. I believe with all my heart that he died for my sins and he was raised on the third day by the Father. I believe in his name. I am saved. Glory to God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Worship him one more time and give him praise. Praise him.